Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is our first video in our Terraform tutorial series in which I am going to talk about the introduction to Terraform. And this is the entire topic we are going to cover through this Terraform tutorial series from basics to advanced. Related document and video links will be mentioned in the description. Please make use of it. We have uploaded a lot of technical videos related to Ansible, Docker, Jenkins, Kubernetes, and other technologies too. If you are interested in learning, then do subscribe now and click near the bell icon to get the notifications. These are the topics I am going to cover as part of introduction to Terraform. Already I have documented all these topics. I will mention the link in the description. You can refer it later. First, we'll understand what is infrastructure as a code. So infrastructure as a code, which means if you are creating your infrastructure with the help of scripts or any files or using any tools, these kind of techniques will be considered as an infrastructure as a code. For example, if you are having a shell scripting where you have sequence of commands to create an EC2 on AWS cloud, then that will be considered as a infrastructure as a code. So the point is, when we say infrastructure as a code, that will help us to automate the entire infrastructure provisioning by using codes, scripts, or any tools instead of creating the infrastructure manually. So that the infrastructure as a code will be like a blueprint for the particular infrastructure or the resources. So with the help of this infrastructure as a code, we can provision, manage, or even we can destroy our entire infrastructure using this infrastructure as a code. So it enables our organization to completely develop, deploy, scale out our cloud applications with greater speed, less risk, and reduced cost. So this is why we use infrastructure as a code. We have many tools available in the market for achieving this infrastructure as a code concept. Terraform, AWS Cloud Formation, Azure Resource Manager, Google Cloud Deployment Manager, Ansible, Chef, Puppet, Tall Stack, even Vagrant, because these tools will also help us to create the entire infrastructure automatically. Let's talk about what is Terraform. So Terraform is also an IAC tool that is infrastructure as a code tool, and it is created by HashiCorp through which users can define the resources, what need to be created, what need to be deleted, or what need to be modified. And they can use modules, and they can provision the entire data center infrastructure easily in a secure way and efficiently using a declarative configuration language that is known as HCL. In another way, we can call it as HashiCorp configuration language, that is HCL, or even Terraform supports JSON format as well. But we predominantly use HCL format. That will be easy for us to you know, create these resources. It is not only to create a new infrastructure, even we can manage our existing infrastructure as well. For that, we need to import all these resources. OK, why should we use Terraforms? And what are the benefits we have? The first point is infrastructure as a code. Yes. We can manage our entire infrastructure through code that making our task easier to create, update, and destroy it. Even after one year or even after two years, also we can use the same code to update our existing infrastructure. So this infrastructure as a code will be a blueprint for our entire infrastructure. Consistency. Terraform ensure the same configuration defined in the Terraform files or applied across multiple environments like development, staging, and productions. So if you create a one environment using this IAC, then we can replicate the same for multiple environments in a matter of seconds. Then automations. Terraform reduces human errors, syntax-related issues, and manual steps by automating all these infrastructure provisionings. Then version controls. Terraform itself has an inbuilt code tracking feature so that our infrastructure changes will be tracked in code, whether it is applied or not, or whether it is 
has any conflicts between your target infrastructure and in your code so that you know making us easier to review and revert changes at any time then collaboration team members can work together on the same infrastructure configurations that will improve the collaboration from every team members and also it will increase the productivity then scalability using terraform we can easily scale our entire infrastructure scale up or scale down based on our project requirements immediately then finally multi cloud terraform can manage the resources available across any different cloud providers from single terraform configurations it is not like that if you create one terraform files for aws then we can use the same terraform codes for other cloud providers as well for that we need to modify few resource modules and all and even the providers but still the terraform supports multiple cloud providers let's talk about how terraform works in order to create or provisioning infrastructure it is not a easy task because the target infrastructure you are going to create using a infrastructure as a code then you should be more familiar with the infrastructure which means you have to be knowledgeable on terraform as well as the target infrastructure for example if you are going to make or provision infrastructure on aws you should be aware on aws what are the resources that would be needed to create it then only you will be able to create the required files on terraforms so the first one is devops or infra engineer who is going to create the infrastructure he will create terraform manifest files once he has created all these things then he has to initialize the working directory for that we use a terraform init command if you are working from a directory and that need to be come under terraform knowledge then we have to use terraform init command after you have created all these files we will plan it which means using terraform plan command we can validate and review the changes that is going to be affected before applying any changes on the target environment it is like a dry run then you will do terraform apply if you are happy with your validation and review and if you are sure what is going to be changed then we can execute the command called terraform apply to apply the desired changes to the infrastructure once this is applied the end result would be the resource that you have defined in your manifest files will be created on the target infrastructure but in between on this manifest file you will mention your providers like who is your provider is it azure gcp aws vm what is your target provider that need to be mentioned also we have some kind of provisioners modules resources that now will cover in the later part first we'll understand how the terraform works for now so once this is applied obviously you will see some kind of a state file it is called terraform state file okay the extension would be .tf state this is the main file will be created for tracking the desired state it will hold the entire current configuration state of your infrastructure this is how the terraform works let's see how to install terraform on windows and linux platforms so this is my ubuntu linux server that is installed with ubuntu 20 so in order to install terraform it is a pretty straightforward procedure just go to google.com and search for download terraform and install terraform and the link is developer.hashicorp.com this is the link open this page and you can see various platforms that supports it supports mac os windows linux freebsd openbsd solaris right so here let me show you for linux on linux it supports ubuntu debian centos rel fedora amazon linux homebrew all right so as i am having a ubuntu linux I'm going to execute this one. First, we need to deploy the GPG key. Then add the official repository of uh, HashiCorp.
Now we can update the repository using apt update command and parallelly we can install the Terraform package. So the Terraform is installed. So just type Terraform and hit enter. So I'm getting an output of usages, how to use this Terraform command, which means the package is installed successfully so that we can start creating directory, we can initialize the directory, and we can start creating Terraform manifest files. Okay, now we'll install Terraform on Windows. So this is on Windows, it will be a binary file. Just we need to download this file and extract the zip file, then just copy this binary file into any um, executable folders like system32 or something so that you can use the Terraform command from your command line interface, right? So here is the section for Windows. It is available for 32-bit uh, and 64-bit. So you can choose your platform. So I'll go with 64. I have already downloaded. Okay, so this is the downloaded Windows package file. Just extract this. And open the extracted folder. Here, if you see, you have only one executable binary file. Okay, just copy this and go to system32. Or even you can set this folder path as your environment path. That's up to you. All right, the file is copied. Now open your command prompt. Type Terraform and hit enter. So if you see this output, that Terraform usage, then the Terraform binary is available for us to initialize the directory and start creating the Terraform manifest file. So that's all in this video. In the next video, we'll discuss about Terraform basics and Terraform initial setup for AWS Cloud. How do we prepare the directories and how do we create the manifest files? So see in the next video. Till then, keep practicing and have fun. How did you feel? Is it helpful? Appreciate our efforts in the comment section below. Hit like button, share with your friends about us, subscribe our channel to get further updates, stay connected with us on social networking sites. For more free tutorials, visit our website www.lanetiguide.net.